Hey guys, what is up? I am Double Driven. Today I got Manny with me. How's it going, guys? How's it going? And we're going to go over the top five cards that we think need nerfed in the upcoming patch. It should be coming out here. Well, it should be after Gamescom, right? After the, the tournament? Yeah, well... What uh... I understand. We 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 heard the announcement that Power Borsa did about like the dates and everything, and everybody's yeah. speculating new things. But the reality of it is that we don't know when it's exactly coming. But you know, everybody knows that is the end of the season is here. So everybody is thinking about changes, about additions. So this is why the beat is here. Right. So we're just gonna go. Uh, we're gonna start from the bottom to the top on the cards that need change. Right now, number five, uh, I I picked this one out. I think this card's pretty crazy. Number five, I got is Gels. We um, got Gels. I, I think Gels, what he what he does is pretty. To me, it's pretty crazy because he pulls a gold and a silver card. He lets you pick, and then the one you don't pick goes right to the top. <laughs> So it's like if, if someone draws you a card, you just got a silver and a gold by playing a gold. It's like no other card does that. It's just, to me, it's it's insane, I think. No, I completely agree with you. Uh, there is no other card that does anything like it. There is absolutely nothing. There is no drawback. Uh, I mean, on the drawback is that you have everything on hand, which then at that point is not a drawback because you have... The answers on hand, the, the things that you needed were on hand, but there is no negative effect as far as like you choose one, the other one go, the other one goes away. As a matter of fact, whatever you don't choose, you can actually plan for later. So it's great. Overall, Gales is this very unique uh, card, and I think it's good. I just think it has to be tweaked a little bit in order to be more fitting to the game because you know reading cards, knowing cards, it's part of the game and Gales kind of clunks that a little bit yeah I mean you play this round two you automatically know your card for round three you know that you're getting a silver a gold you know it might be the one crone that you need it might be caretaker that pulls something you know crazy it's just like whatever card you don't pick I think it should throw it either to the bottom or I don't know how would you change it Actually, that's, that's what I would do. That's a really good idea. The, the other one changes to the bottom. That's kind of cool. Or like, uh, I don't know, maybe even even throw it away. Like it Yeah, will, I mean, will you be, look at other cards. Yeah, if it, if it, it was going to throw it away, maybe add a little bit of strength to Gales, right? Just to compensate, you're losing a card, a part of your strategy, right? So that's what I will right. do. I will maybe throw it into the garbage, but add a little bit of strength to to Gales, throwing to the garbage, <laughs> the graveyard, I meant. <laughs> the garbage can, the garbage AKA can, yeah, the yeah. graveyard. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, I just think it's it, it's a great card. I mean, I, I I fault no one for running it, but just to, like I said, you play this round two, and you're setting yourself up for a for sure card that you, you know, know you're gonna get, and it's probably gonna win you the game. Yeah, Gels is a really strong uh, play overall, and uh, yeah, we've seen it like on tournament. Gels also like it, the way that he plays; it always a swing. Yeah, yeah, it's always just massive. It's just it, if if you're looking for that crone, you get it. You know, it's mm -hmm. just I I just I think it's a really it it's it's borderline OP, but. It, I, I think it, it's just too strong to know what you're going to get the next card. And it's going to be, you know, either a gold or a silver. Yeah, I think that this uniqueness is what also what makes it so stro so hard to say that if it's OP or not. But, like, overall, it's uh, I think it needs a nerf. And that's why he's on the list. Yes. So, number four we got down is Triss Butt. Now, a lot of people aren't playing Triss Butt that much, but the fact that she's basically, to me, she's like a constant full test. <laughs> Whatever's on your board, she's just buffing by one, the lowest strength. But I mean, you know, you're right now you're playing it with mostly monsters, so you're 
just constantly buffing out ones. Then those ones turned into twos. Then they're even level with the harpies that you originally spawned. Now the threes, they're, it's just it's constantly getting out of hand. It can set you up for you know failure with a scorch, but just overall, if this thing's on the board and it's not answered, and your opponent, you know, you could pass, and whatever's on the board is just constantly growing. It might be four strength, seven strength, but it's constantly growing. So you always have to almost double what you know your opponent has because it's just constantly crocking. Yeah, this is one of those cards that we call the check cards. Pretty much once you play, you check your opponent if he has the answer or not. And if he doesn't have the answer available, that's it. You're going to punish him and there is absolutely nothing that he can do about it. Even if he has Scorch, sometimes you're simply going to bait the three's bot, right? And then after that, he Scorches and then you're like, okay, I'm happy with this round. I'm going to use Renew next one and that's what it's going to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, so once again, it's... A little bit of the factor that she is kind of capped by the amount of rounds that you play, but she's uncapped by the amount of minions. So whenever we're on a meta that things are capped, Three's bot breaks that rule by a little bit by being uncapped on minions and how many she buffs. Yeah, and it's just, like you said, she's just constant, you know, pressure on your opponent without doing anything just by you playing units that are low strength and you're just you know it's a it's a swarm tactic it can get burned with scorch and things like that but like you said she kind of it, it seems like if you're running tris but you're in tandem running it with renew so you're playing it again the next round so if you had the carryover all the same strength she's doing it to you again <laughs> so she's just coming back for more and just you know, here you go. I'm playing one more card. You know, get 28 strength in two turns. And by the way, I'm going to keep growing as I go. Yes. Uh, that's how it goes. And, and eventually, it gets to that point where, like, there is, like, eight units on the board that are growing together. And you're trying to catch that eight strength that is going to come up. But your opponent is just going to pass. And then you're like, ah, oh, damn it, I only have eight. So then the next one, oh, I have to pass eight again. It's, oh, it's, and then it becomes like, it gets out of hand pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's, it's, it's it, like I said, it's not played that much, but like Tragic Star, we were talking to him before we started making, he said, you know, it's just, it's an unhealthy card. You know, you're just, and it's neutral, so anyone can play it. It's not even like a faction specific, so you're just giving everyone the chance to, you know, use this card and it can, it's just, it, it's not good. I don't think it's we, overall it, it needs, very strong. It should, it's like you said, it should have some type of maybe three units or something like that. It's still going to grow, but to, to just constantly let ones turn into sixes after three turns, it's just, it's too much. Yeah. I like to compare sometimes street yes. butterfly to uh Cantarella. And like the value that you get with Tris Butterfly is like over two two rounds is like much better than the entire Cantarella. Right. Yeah, and that shouldn't be. Yeah. Especially since it's it's just you're you're getting you're punishing your opponent for passing <laughs> or or to you know to keep the cards you know that are on the board that are so small just caught. Yeah. So that's that's my thought on Tris Butterfly spell. All right, so number three we got down is Coral. Now, Coral, I watched yesterday. I was watching Swim play in the, the TGO, and he hit for, an, I think it was like an 80-point Coral. <laughs> I'm just like, it was it was insane. I'm just like, did that really just happen? Like, one card, five strength, just nuked an opponent for, some people don't even put up 80 strength in a game, let alone take it 80 strength for somebody. It, uh, it 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 needs to be brought down from the whole row to specific amount of units. It's just right now it it's it, it cuts everything in half. I mean, granted, it punishes row stacking, but eighty strength taken off an opponent. It's like wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like super strong. And sometimes even when you try to play, like you know. 
uh, out of the lane, just simply trying to stack different lanes. Uh, so she gets, she can get easily 30 points of strength, 40 points of strength. It's uh, one of those cards who are like, once again, the whenever you're playing a meta, wow, I move my hand and then suddenly move the card. But uh, so once again, it's um, it's one of those cards that are, it's uncapped. Right, and by being on cap, once it allows you to get like so much value, and a lot of people are like, "Well, on cap really doesn't mean anything," and the reality is it does, because it allows you to get value to uh, an infinite potential <laughs> technically. But you know what I'm saying? So, but whenever you play a game that has been cap against something like with a card that has been on cap. That cap card will always try to get more as much value as possible, while the other ones are already restricted. Now, uh, there is one thing about Coral that nobody has ever pointed out, guys. All right, this is a brand new thing. I think that she's also OP because the art is so beautiful it distracts the <laughs> opponent. Like every time someone plays Coral, I have to right click it and just look at it, and I lose like five seconds of thinking. It's it's yeah. great. Yes. Yeah, the premium of it, man. It looks like uh, she's just like making all these dudes just float in the air. I don't know what's really going on here. But, yeah, and uh, how she laughs and everything is great. It is. It, it is an amazing premium card. But uh, a lot of people too, they'll say, "Well, this is this is kind of the only answer for dwarves." You know what I mean? Because they are row stacking and they're trying to, you know, buff up one giant row. You know, so. Well, what, what do you think about that? You oh, know, it's it's uh, no, kind of like I, the only answer. Well, this 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 is another problem. Uh, as far as um, I've talked to the guys and uh, idealists, and uh, everybody thinks that carry over is a problem of, of its own. Uh, how it works? Uh, I this now the next one is my personal uh, opinion. Since they nerf some of the carry overs for silvers. And leaving the bronzes with normal carry over, that kind of unbalances carry over, making bronze carry over much more powerful than it used to be. And yes, carry over with with uh, what's it called um, with bronzes right now as dwarf is an issue. And the problem with that is once again just simply adrenaline rush. Yeah, it's. It's it, it's kind of like it, it it's the answer, but it's it, it overall that that whole thing needs to be changed. But the way the way coral is right now, it it's just it's got to change. <laughs> it has to. Yes. There's no way that you should be able to play. I mean, granted, if it's a scorch or something like that, and you nuke somebody for you know eighty, okay, you know you you messed up by playing a bunch of units the same strength, but. To have staggered strength and just for it to all get locked in half is just, it's 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 too strong. There's just no way it, it shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be punished for actually staggering your rows. I could if you if you play a bunch of units that are all the same strength and you drop them down one two three and you get scorched, you deserve it flat out. You yes. deserve it. Yes. But to have staggered strength and get it all chopped in half like that it shouldn't happen. And I would like to point out that uh, Igni is one of those cards that you rely on your opponent making a mistake, and you then you capitalize on that. And he's for strength. While Coral, she's going to get value because you're going to play in one row. Doesn't matter what row, you're playing on that row. So, and she's five strength. Right. Yeah, so it's just... Uh, it, that's just... that. It just it is what it is. It, it has to change. And if, if it doesn't, it's... Skellig is going to definitely be auto including <laughs> coral forever because it's just it's too it's too good yes so we're gonna move on to number two and it's in the same faction and a lot of people are really hating on this card and uh his name is donner on hinder <laughs> oh my god i, now, I he, as i he, remember as i remember a lot of people called him public enemy number one yeah so he, he he has the lock you know on him the lock tag so he can lock a unit but then he discards a random bronze card from your opponent's deck to your graveyard so he's he's locking something that you you found valuable and then he's also taking something from you that was probably valuable mm -hmm. <laughs> 
you play this guy round three against Tensel, it's almost a given you're taking one of his Reaver Hunters. It's almost a given. They're going to be in that four to five card range. Three of those are going to – three or two of them are going to be Reaver Hunters. You're taking a Reaver Hunter off of them. Yeah, and if like in the situation that you just pointed out, right, let's say a Reaver Hunter, how much value is that? One river hunter with two river hunters is like ten values, so that's technically a sixteen a sixteen point play. You don't see it on the board, but like you know, you know, the reason that you don't see it on the board is what makes it really really strong. Uh, and not just that, he he's not what's it called uh, doom. So what happens yeah. is you can actually take more than one. A lot of people actually oh do this on turn one, and I've seen plays. Like, this play looks sounds ridiculous of just, like, locking something, but sometimes people just lock it so they can t- remove away some kind of combo bronze card, and then next round they do it again. So, uh, after that, uh, easy street on uh, round three. Plus two, he's got veteran tag on him, too. So he's growing. <laughs> yes. So if you play him round one, you lock something. You res him round three, he's an eight that stole probably one of your win conditions. Yes, it's uh, literally a super strong card. A lot of people don't like it because, you know, uh, Wendt has very little RNG, but Donner and Hinder is the cap of that RNG kind of thing. You know, it's the biggest RNG that you will probably see in this game. I mean, if you don't count Donner and Dim, but you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not throwing Gontro Dim on the top five nerf list. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, it, uh, it's, it, I, I think it, it makes people so mad because you're just stealing something from them. It's one thing with, like like with Caretaker. You know what Caretaker does. You're going to pick what Caretaker takes. Yeah. This guy is just like, I'm going to close my eyes. Give me this. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, man, you know, it's just you, you stole it from me. It's just it's it's the fact that I think that he just he just takes from you with, without like it, it might be something that's completely dumb. He might steal, you know, one shrooms, you know what I mean? <laughs> but if if he steals that that thing you wanted to keep, it uh, it ruins your whole day, man. And especially in round three when you're when you're banking on that card to pull it out of your, your graveyard or whatever, you know, but it's just like – and then he can use it against – they can use it against you because yes. they have, you know, all these reses. Yes, it's, that, that makes it really, really strong. And, like, for example – um, it gives you information and, and changes the way you play. Let me give you an example. Sometimes, like, I'm playing, you know, uh, I was playing against Dwarves, and then I don't know Hinder, and don't know Hinder gave me uh, Adrenaline Rush. So this way, <laughs> the next one, I was I was opening pass right there, and I knew he couldn't carry over that to, ter- uh, to turn three because don't know Hinder took his one Adrenaline Rush. No, no, there, Nobody runs two of them. So at that point, I was like super happy. I was very confident that there was nothing he could have done to actually win the game, even though I had just opened pass and we were, we, there was still one round to go. You know what I'm saying? So right, yeah, yeah. But it it's just it, the way he's the way he's set up. How you would change him? I'm not sure. If I don't know if they would have to give him like maybe like just give him like kind of like a Swears tag where whatever you lock, you know, you could take one of those out of his deck. That way, at least you know what happened. When it's like random like that, it's just, it's that. And you, like you said, you got to make them doomed because doing it twice is just too much. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is like a very, very strong card. Uh, overall, like it goes on any kind of Skellige deck pretty much. Yeah. Just because, like him, he's a one one man army dude. Like he doesn't care yeah. what deck he's on. He's gonna make his do- job and he's gonna do it well. Yeah, yeah, and he's gonna he's he's gonna punch the living. You know what? I, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's a punch yeah. in the face, man. But the, uh, the artwork uh, is perfect for that. You'll say the yeah. artwork is just perfect. Absolutely, yeah. He's just plowing some dude right in the face. <laughs> That, that dude is usually me. Yeah. <laughs> that dude is usually me. Like, oh! Oh! Thanks. But, uh, all right, so the number one. Uh, drum rolls. Drum yeah, rolls and everything, man. Number one is the Harpy. The Harpy just is, 
from from what I understand, they they kind of leaked already that he was going to be changed, but we put it on there because it it definitely for sure has to be changed. It just it's it it's playing a three and two ones that turn into threes later on, and then those threes that actually spawn can actually trigger other death rattle minions like earth elemental it's just or you can play it in consume it triggers next to a necker you got a 14 point necker and it lands next to it you just got you know all that strength off of one card it's just there's so many different things that can happen and it's all carry over and it it's just way too strong <laughs> it needs to it needs to be changed yesterday i was doing my climb my climb for the 4200 and uh, i top deck a seven harpy a lot round three and i felt so safe i was like yes i did it i have hero ability you know jackpot but and then and i never realized how sad it was that you know the Seleno harpy gives so much value um the way that the Seleno Harpy punishes you for cracking the eggs is crazy. The way that it punishes you for not cracking the eggs is crazy. The carryover for Seleno Harpy is insane. The synergy that Seleno Harpy has with a, a bunch of uh, monster cards is fantastic. Seleno Harpy makes it into weather, into consumption. Like if I was, uh, what's it called, like playing, I don't know, Skellige and I could put a, a Seleno Harpy. I will put a Seleno Harpy because you know carry over It's she's very uh, Seleno Harpies are very versatile. They're very very good at doing pretty much everything Sometimes we don't realize that we just have to play a card in order to buy one more round one more turn on the round and playing a Seleno Harpy is a very safe play because fine you decide to don't play the next turn on that round so then you have got re-over. If you decide to play, your opponent decides to pass, well then you just consume it and do a huge swing. Overall, Seleno Harpy is, my opinion, like the number one most nerf. And most people will be like, but didn't you say that Donner was the number one uh, enemy, public enemy number one? Yes, but Seleno Harpy, they're bronzes and you're gonna have to deal with three, at least. That's for sure. Donner at least two, but Seleno Harpy is three. And sometimes your opponent doesn't draw Donner compared to Seleno Harpy. You will see it on the board. You will see it in a field. And like you said, just just there's so many different things that it can do for a bronze card. It it and it it synergizes with so many other bronze cards that are pretty OP themselves. I mean, you got the Earth Elemental. You're always playing these things that are right, so that. If they do crack your eggs, it goes on the second round. You gave them a three, and then you get two fours on top. Like, it's just a lose-lose, like you said. You you crack the eggs, you get punished. If you don't crack the eggs, you get punished. <laughs> so it's yeah. just the, 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 the thing, the only thing that I've ever seen where it wasn't good is when you play it and consume, and that those – eggs crack on the front row with neckers and you pull all your neckers in round one <laughs> granted if you won that round the opponent has to deal with all that strength but it's like you're out of neckers that's like to me that's like the worst case scenario but even in the worst case scenario it's still good because you just throw a bunch of stuff on the board free yeah and there is a lot of things that you can do to don't for that not to happen you can just put the necker on the left and that's it <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. So, but like for example, on the seat, on the first scenario that you told me that with the golems. So let's pretend you play a golem, you play some harpy, the egg cracks, it pops the on melee. Then you're gonna proc that golem. So right. you have to add plus four to that play. So you're like, oh my god, no, you know. So all these numbers, they're little numbers, but they keep adding. Yeah, and it, it one thing that I. I was talking to Tragic about this. It's like the monster faction in general, like, I mean, yeah, there's, there needs to be like vanilla car and stuff like that. And, you know, answers like, you know, Arch Griffin or, you know, just a regular Griffin, you know, if you want to tech in one of those, but like the way they have it set up now, no matter what leader you're playing, you're playing Harpy, you're playing elementals. It's like, 
it, 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 it doesn't feel like it has that like synergy, like weather monsters should have no business playing, you know, a harpy <laughs> that gives you, you know, strength for eating an egg. It's like, it, it, it doesn't make it. I mean, if you're, you know, free to play or whatever, and you have these in your deck, sure. But the deck should have like a synergy, you know, discard Skellige has, you know, discard cards in it, you know, dwarves have dwarves in it. It's like, this card has no business being in weather because it shouldn't have any synergy, but because it's so much carryover, it's there. Cause why wouldn't you play it? You're, you're, you're investing in this round and then the next round is. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of people actually use the Lone Harpies as protection as well. Um, there is, uh, the name eludes me right now, but there is a couple of streamers that actually wait until the opponent plays the frost and they actually pop the egg right there and eventually they just overwhelm him and there is nothing that the other opponent can actually do to overcome that amount of strength. It's just, once again, Seleno Harpy is doing what Seleno Harpy does best and that is everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, from what I understand, it's, it, it, there's been already like some leaked pictures of it changing six strength and stuff like that, but we'll just have to wait and see, you know, what it does and everything. And it looks like there's going to be death, you know, death wish synergy with other cards that are going to be made. But we'll just have to wait and see how those all play out. Yeah, I'll just yeah. wait for the official. Like that, that you know, I prefer when once I uh, it's like a, to me it's like a Game of Thrones episode, man. I just gotta yeah. see it when it comes out. That's all. Right. Yeah, and that's, overall, it's, I feel that it's also parts of the speculations and the people that really feel a need for this card to change. So overall, it's kind of that. But. That's the top five for today, guys. Let, let me know what you think. Um, I, I there, There's a couple cards we, we kind of were on the fence about, but if you got one that you think needs to be changed, throw it down in the Um, I'll turn it over to Manny, let him know where to find Manny and the Idealist crew and everything. All right. Well, thanks. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me, man. As, uh, as always, I have a blast recording with you. Uh, well... I have my Twitter, which is uh, Twitter XD Manti. Somebody had Manti XD, and I will find you. Yep, take and, him uh, out. Yeah, I will find you. And, we're gonna um, dawn our the Manti <laughs> XD that's on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have um, Wen City, which is Wen City on YouTube. We also have uh, Wen City on Twitter, and uh, Idealist. The guys are playing as we're recording right now. Vage is defending the Idealist Pride. Oh, the TGO. Remember, guys, TGO is a fantastic uh, tournament. Make sure you check it out. If you guys want to root for us, great. If not, root for your favorite player. Make sure you support the community because ha that's how a game grows. So with that being said, man, thank you for having me, and it's up to you now. Yeah. All right, guys. Yep. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. If you could, thumbs up button or the subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. You guys are all wonderful. But we'll see you next time next time.